welcome. In today's session, we'll be looking at urea cycle, also known as the onidine cycle. Uh, it's named after the guy who uh, discovered it, Krebs Henslet cycle. So all those three names refer to a common cycle. So in today, in today's session, we'll be looking at the following objectives. So at the end of this session, you should be able to describe the reactions of the urea cycle. You should also be able to state the source of ammonia for the urea cycle. You should be, you should also know how the urea cycle is regulated and know the fate of urea. So welcome all, my name is Horace Munyere. So to start off, let's look at the reactions of urea cycle. So urea cycle, this is just an overview. We starting with, the, as you can see here, ammonia and carbon four oxide. This carbon four oxide is derived from this bicarbonate ion. They combine to form the carbomyl phosphate which will now enter there. This, this is now the real cycle. You know, a cycle is something which is like uh, moving around a point. So the carbomyl phosphate will combine with only thine here to form citrulline. Then to citrulline, we will add aspartate. Aspartate is an amino acid to form arginino-succinate. Then the arginino-succinate from arginino-succinate, we will, there we will obtain arginine. In this reaction here from arginino-succinate, fumarate will also be produced. Then from arginine is where you will get your urea. So this is just an, a brief one. It is a very easy, urea cycle I think is a very easy uh, reactions. You can see just one, two, three, four, five, only five reaction, but four of them are in the cycle. So let's look at this in detail. So here it is. So we will start uh, here. We will start here. You can see here we have ammonia and the bicarbonate ion. So they combine this reaction of the this is uh, the reaction where we combine ammonia and the carbon four oxide derived from the carbon carbonate bicarbonate ion. This reaction is characterized by this enzyme known as carbomyl phosphate. Synthetase, synthetase one. Okay. This carbomyl phosphate synthetase one. Maybe I should let me use a. Uh, me be pointing those things so that some of you can see well. Now, this carbomyl phosphate synthetase one, <coughs> it is mitochondrial. There is also carbomyl phosphate synthetase two, but it is cytosolic. Maybe you should check on the differences and similarities between those two enzymes. So, here we will take a bicarbonate ion, which will give you your CO2. CO2 is carbon four oxide and ammonia. Then we will add two ATPs. That is why it is called a synthetase. It is using some form of energy to get your carbomyl phosphate. So you can see this, this nitrogen is the one which we obtain from the ammonia. And this carbon here is the one which we obtain from the carbon four oxide which is from the bicarbonate ion. Then this phosphate will be derived from one of the, of the gamma phosphate of ATP. So here we put in two ATP, we will get two ADPs and one organic phosphate. So you can see in the two ATP, we have um, six, six phosphates because every ATP has three phosphates, the alpha, beta, and the gamma, but one of the gamma is removed and is added to, to form carbomyl phosphate. Now, 
carbamyl phosphate is the one now which will enter the onithine cycle by combining with, as the name says, onithine. It will combine with onithine. This is the structure of onithine here. This is onithine. Okay. So this is onithine. Onithine, when you add it, when you add carbamyl phosphate to onithine, a reaction which is catalyzed by this other enzyme here, the onithine transcarbamylase, known also it is abbreviated as OTC, onithine transcarbamylase, you get citrulline. Okay, you get citrulline. So in this reaction, and you see this phosphate here, the one which was derived from the ATP is rust. So I should use maybe very fast. So you can see this. You can see this. This phosphate was this one. Okay. And then this NH2 and CO. They are added to onithine. They are added here. Form this citrulline. Form citrulline here. Okay. Then this citrulline is this reaction takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. Always remember that. Then there is usually an antipotter, which now will transport citrulline from the mitochondrial matrix into the cytosol okay so once in the cytosol um citrulline we we will add aspartate to citrulline citrulline we add aspartate to it let me use another color for this so uh -huh. so aspartate and citrulline, we add them. This is the structure of aspartate. Remember, aspartate is an amino acid. In fact, it is the deprotonated form of aspartic acid. So, citrulline plus aspartate, a reaction which is catalyzed by arginosuccinate synthetase. This is also a synthetase where we will use an one ATP, we will add an ATP to get an AMP and a pyrophosphate. Remember pyrophosphate will be, we will add, we will, will be hydrolyzed to, to give you two inorganic phosphate. We will add water to the pyrophosphate to get two inorganic phosphate, a reaction which is catalyzed by pyrophosphorylase enzyme. So, a geninosaxinate synthetase will combine aspartate and citrulline, as the name suggests, we will get our succinate. Now, I want you to, to look at something which is important here. See this. In the arginosaxinate, you can see this part, the one I'm pointed. Let me first, sorry, let me clear this. Let me use another color. This part we have pointed, that part was obtained from your aspartate. So you can see that part I've pointed and this aspartate, they are somewhat the same. And this other part was obtained from citrulline. Okay. So where was, where was aspartate added? We added it here. In the citrulline, at that oxygen, we added this this group, the amino group. Okay. So the function of aspartate is to provide the second second nitrogen, the second nitrogen in the in the urea which we will form. So let me. So as you can see here, aspartate. A reaction catalyzed by arginosuccinate synthetase, we form arginosuccinate. Then, in the next reaction, in the next reaction here, as you can see, arginosuccinate is cleaved by arginosuccinate lyase to form 
form we will form a uh, arginine once we cleave we will form arginine here and fumarate remember fumarate is a tca intermediate yes so first let's complete the cycle so arginine we will cleave at this position at this position is where we cleave the enzyme acts are there to form arginine this part will form arginine and this other part will form fumarate so arginine is acted upon by another enzyme known as arginase we cleave we cleave which bond if you can see it we cleave this bond this bond is the one cleaved by arginase enzyme and this part the part which is above the arrow will give you your urea okay and the, the remaining part will form onidine okay so in this reaction we will add some water is needed so that uh, the oxygen this oxygen from water will go to the urea and these hydrogens will, uh, will remain will be added to the to the to the terminal nitrogen here at arginine will be added here so that they can form now this in citrulline uh, sorry in onidine then onidine is transported across the mitochondrial in a mitochondrial membrane via the antipota remember an antipota is the one if onidine is moving inward to this this direction citrulline will be moving in the opposite that is the work of an antipoda it transports in opposite direction so that is that that is you by describing those reactions you have already completed the urea cycle because you have already produced your urea now what is the fate of this fumarate what is the fate of that fumarate now this fumarate here as you can see this fumarate via the action of, of fumarase it will form marriage then marriage will be acted upon by marriage dehydrogenase to form your oxaloacetate now oxaloacetate is combined with glutamate remember oxaloacetate is an alpha keto acid and glutamate is an alpha amino acid this is a transamination reaction so catalyzed by the glutamate oxaloacetate transaminase the one if you can remember so let me write that in short form glutamate oxaloacetate transaminase enzyme so this if you can remember if you have uh, been following kinery the glutamate oxaloacetate we also used it in the mallet aspartate shuttle system if you have uh, remember the mallet aspartate shuttle system yeah that it will also be used there so this reaction catalyzed by the glutamate oxaloacetate transaminase we will form back your aspartate and alpha ketoglutarate alpha ketoglutarate will go back to the it can go to the tca cycle so that is that so you can see where aspartate will come from it can be generated from fumarate also you, you saw where carbamide phosphate was coming from so you should know all those reactions kennedy so just here formation of citrulline formation of adenosaccinate formation of arginine urea onidine onidine goes back to the mitochondrial matrix so yeah with that you have done there the actions of the urea cycle now where does this ammonia come from the ammonia it has four main sources one it can come either from the oxidative deamination of glutamate in the river a reaction which is catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase glutamate dehydrogenase is a very unique enzyme in that it can use the book it can use both nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and also use 
nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, abbreviated as it can either use NAD and NADB. So that is one source of ammonia. Another source is the conversion of glutamine to glutamate, the action catalyzed by glutaminase enzyme. Also, some three amino acids undergo non-oxidative deamination. Those three are serine, threonine, and histidine. Those ones, they are usually, uh, they, they use their, their ammonia under the action of their respective dehydrogenases. So that is another source of ammonia in your body. So let's say like, um, they are serine, serine, serine is converted to, let's say, virionine. Virionine, the non oxidative deamination of serine, virionine, and histidine. Yeah, 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 did not complete this statement by action of their respective dehydratases. Then there is also conversion of, um, of urea to ammonia by the gut bacteria via action of bacterial urease enzyme. So those are the four sources of ammonia for urea cycle. So this is one, this is uh, a representation of the two, two, two of the two, two, two sources. Maybe I should uh, show you quickly. Here you can see you have glutamate. Then under the action of glutamate dehydrogenase, you get your alpha ketoglutarate and your ammonia. That is one source of ammonia. Another one is from glutamine. Glutamine, via the action of glutaminase, you will get your ammonia here and glutamate. Glutamate will now further undergo oxidative deamination via the action of glutamate dehydrogenase. Those are two of the four sources of ammonia. The other one I said is the action of the gut bacteria, which act on urea to give ammonia, and also the non-oxidative deamination of the three amino acids, serine, threonine, and histidine. So, those are the sources of ammonia. So, so I hope you have understood that. Then let's look at the regulation. How is the how is the how is this cycle? Sorry. How is this cycle regulated? There is a very important regulator of the urea cycle. That regulator is known as the N-acetylglutamate. It usually regulates the action of the carbomyl phosphate synthetase one. Okay, it is an activator. If you don't have if the N-acetylglutamate, let's say you have a deficiency of this enzyme, which is responsible for the synthesis of the N-acetylglutamate. That enzyme is known as the N acetyl glutamate synthase, not a synthetase, a synthase. If you have a deficiency of that enzyme, you will not produce the N acetyl glutamate, and hence you will not activate the carbomyl phosphate synthetase one. Hence, there will be no formation of the carbomyl phosphate. So, which will, which is which usually combined with the only thing to form citrulline. So, this is a very this is a very key, uh, an important regulator of um, the urea cycle. So the N-acetylglutamate is formed from glutamate and oxaloacetyl-CoA, sorry. I've said the enzyme is the N-acetylglutamate synthase. This enzyme is also activated by arginine. Remember, you obtain urea from arginine by the action of arginase. So when arginine levels are high, they will activate the synthase and you will form the N-acetylglutamate, which will now activate the carbamide phosphate 
synthesis one. That, that is a very, remember that point. This is a very important point that N acetyl glutamate is an activator of your carbamyl synthetase, car carbamyl phosphate synthetase one. So, what is the fate of urea after you have produced urea from arginine after the reaction of arginine? Where will it go? From the liver, it is transported to the menu to the kidney where it is excreted, but some usually diffuse. In fact, they say a portion 25%, up to 25% diffuse into the intestine where it will be craved to carbon dioxide and ammonia by bacterial ureas. This enzyme will cleave urea to ammonia and carbon dioxide. Some of the ammonia is usually diffused, is carried back to the river via the portal circulation, where some is lost in stool. Obviously, carbon dioxide will be lost also. Uh, now, during kidney, ask yourself, what would happen during a kidney failure? The urea, you will not be able to excrete urea. If you are not being able to excrete urea, most of it will go to the intestine, where it will be converted to ammonia by the bacteria, by the back gut bacteria which have urease enzyme, which will lead to increased level of ammonia, hyperammonemia. Now, how will you treat this? You can administer antibiotics, which will reduce the number of the intestinal bacteria. So if you reduce the number of intestinal bacteria, the ammonia they produce will be very low. Remember, ammonia is very toxic, especially when it comes to um, nervous tissue. The brain is very sensitive to ammonia. So you must keep your ammonia levels very low. So that is the end. And uh, let's go back and try to see if you can be able to... Um, what, are, what were the reactions of the urea cycle? Can you be able to, to give them? What are, the, what are the sources of ammonia? Remember those four. Regulation, remember N acetyl glutamate, fit, remember the kidney and the intestine via the bacterial urease. And uh, with that, guys, we have come to the end of this session. Thank you. And uh, Please subscribe for more anatomy and biochemistry content.